now we got that. Okay, so if you have a pen and paper, we can write your answers as you go along. If not, you could just think of them in your head. Okay, the first, <laughs> Michelle says, don't mind the man behind the curtain. Okay, Michelle. <laughs> okay, so just wanna make sure we're on. All right, our first question is, when Mahjong first became extremely popular and sets were being made in China for export to the US, what product was exported to China to help with the shortage of materials to make Mahjong tiles? You have 20 seconds. But do you want me to do the timer? <laughs> So the answer for that was cow bone. So they needed to export cow bone from the US to China to make the tiles and then bring them back to the US. So now for question number two. For National Mahjong League play, what is the term for when a player's very last move before declaring Mahjong is redeeming a joker from their own rack? So not from someone else's rack, but from their own rack. And here's the timer. Hmm. There, we can't hear your timer. Oh, okay, I'll put mine on. And Donna, you have the answer? Okay, the term is called a finesse move. The National Mahjong League considers it self-picked and everybody pays double. <laughs> okay, next question. This is about the National Mahjong League card. What letters are on the front that haven't been used for a few years, but have been explained on the back of the card from prior years? Hmm. And the answer to that one is while the back of the card kept it, so if they used it again, it would be easy to just keep the rules as they are but it's the letters G for green dragon and R for red dragon. And um, Amy, yeah, we know everyone's muted. Otherwise there's a lot of background noise. So it's just easier to keep everyone muted. And you could just keep track if you want of your answers or you could play it back again on replay and see how many you got right. And at the end, we'll unmute everyone so we can all talk. Yeah. So the next question will be um, the part of the video answer. There was film star Anna May Wong held a Mahjong party to fundraise for which cause? So while you're thinking of that, I will share my screen and here's the answer. In 1940, film star Anna Mae Wong hosted a Mahjong luncheon to fundraise for war relief for China specifically American medical aid for China, which was experiencing Japanese invasion. Very interesting. Hey, Donna, you have the next question. Yeah, just stop. Okay. Um, the next question is, what was the name of the first president and vice president of the National Mahjong League? So first president and vice president. And here we go. The first president of the National Mahjong League was Viola Cecil. The first vice president of the National Mahjong League was Dorothy Meyerson. 
Okay. Our next question is a true or false. For the National Majin League card, when used as a zero in the 2021 section, does the white dragon have to be paired with the dot suit? So true or false, if you see a zero in the 2021 section, do you need to use dots? Sorry, when I share my screen and then switch back to the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, the answer is false. It's important to read all the notes on the card See the note that is above the 2021 section. White dragon is used as zero. It may be used with any suit, cracks, bams, or dots. We, can't, we get asked that a lot. Okay, the next question is, what was Marion Angeline Howlett's role in the popularity of Mahjong? So we're talking about Marion Angeline Howlett. So this is one that, um, unless you are, are really a reader of history before um, the Annalise's book, you probably would not have heard of Marion Angeline Howlett. She was a Maja entrepreneur and traveling lecturer, one of a growing number of women that headed to Asia for both tourism and adventure. And when she returned back to the United States, she marketed her skills as a Mahjong instructor and she wore silk robes and she played with a bone and bamboo set that she bought in Shanghai in 1921. So that gave her credibility as an authentic Mahjong instructor, even though as Annalise explained, she was really teaching um, an expatriate version of the game, but she gave herself authenticity. So our next question is, what famous artist designed costumes that were used for a Mahjong ballet in the 1920s? So even if you don't know, a hint for this is even if you don't necessarily know an artist that was dealing with Mahjong, just a very famous art deco artist of the time. Okay, the famous artist who designed costumes for Mahjong Ballet was Erte. Hmm. Okay, the next question is, how many hands are there with a pung of flowers on the 2021 National Mahjong League card? So how many hands with a pung of flowers on the new card? <laughs> So the answer to that question is zero. There are no hands with three flowers. So if you see someone expose that, you know you can call them dead, their hand dead. So the next question is gonna be another video answer. If a player calls a tile, for example, like a four bam and puts the four bam on their rack and they use a joker, but they haven't yet discarded can they change their mind and put the joker back to their rack? Not the discarded tile, but the one from their rack. Can they put up another four bam? Can they change their exposure?
everyone, Teresa from Vera Beach here to answer Modern Mahjong's trivia question about changing exposure during your turn. So you've called a tile, you've placed it on your rack, and you're not sure if you want to do a Pung, or a Kong, or a Quint. But you can change the exposure while it is your turn, from a Pung to a Kong to a Quint, and back down again, up until you discard. Once you've discarded, that exposure has to remain as is. Have a great time. Good luck. Bye. Thank you, Teresa. <laughs> the next question is, what fashion designer imagined a line of clothing ranging from a day look, pool look, evening dress, and cocktail dress? Photos can be seen in crackbam.majan that we shared on our Majan community Facebook page. <laughs> So for the answer to that, so Isaac Mizrahi designed these um, dresses, bathing suit, evening wear, and that skirt with Mahjong tiles on it. And his mother played Mahjong and it is in, um, there's a whole spread of his con conceptual designs, which I think if he came out with them would sell very well. <laughs> so the next question is, what does the federal savings and loan of Oklahoma City have to do with Mahjong? So the federal savings and loan of Oklahoma City <laughs> have to do with Mahjong. And Andy Warhol was a very good guest, Michelle. We get, we'll give you half credit for that one. <laughs> Okay, the answer, which is very interesting. So the Federal Savings and Loan of Oklahoma City codified and promoted rules and published a booklet of Mahjong hands with regional flair as a form of advertising. They were possibly influenced by Dorothy Meyerson's marketing efforts. They called the passing of tiles the exchange rather than the Charleston. Very interesting. Okay, so next question. When researching her book, Mahjong, A Chinese Game, and the Making of Modern American Culture, Annalise Hines viewed many scrapbooks, articles, documents, photographs, and personal interviews. Name two of the scrapbooks that she shared on our Zoom talk. Even if you weren't on the Zoom talk or you didn't watch, you might be able to guess. One was a company and one was a person. Oh dear, I can't with your sharing your screen. <laughs> I couldn't stop mine with your sharing our screen. Okay. Oh, okay. So it's Dorothy Meyerson and it's the Majal sales, sales Company. And we shared photos of them on our Facebook group. So you could see those there. So our next question is, this is throwback trivia. If you were on our first trivia night, how many tiles are left after everyone takes their tiles in the beginning of a National Mahjong League game. So after every, the East has 14 and everyone else has 13, how many tiles are left? Okay. What happened? 
happened. There it goes. Sorry. Still admitting people. Okay, so how many tiles are left after four players are dealt tiles? The answer is 99. This is good to know so when playing online, you can adjust strategy depending on how many tiles are left. Okay, sorry, I'm letting people in. Next question. <laughs> What is the name of the festival that celebrates the cultural diversity of the Lower East Side Chinatown? What is the festival about? So the festival is based out of the landmark Eldred Street Synagogue in New York, and it is called the Egg Roll, Egg Cream, and Empanada Festival. It is the neighborhood festival traditionally held in June, and they will be holding it virtually this year. So, sorry about that. So they will be holding it virtually, and they will be having a big announcement soon, so they will share it to our Facebook group. So stay tuned about that. And now we were very fortunate that they shared with us a lovely video from the last time that they held the festival. On Sunday, the museum at Elbrook Street held its 19th annual Egg Rolls, Egg Creams, and Empanadas Festival to celebrate the diverse communities of the Lower East Side neighborhood with the Elbrook Street Synagogue as its centerpiece. We're proud to celebrate that heritage with this festival by highlighting the folk arts, the food, the music, and the dance of all of these cultures, and talk about the ways that these immigrant groups have brought their traditions to America, and then had them change and shift and develop into new American cultures. The festival is named for the three foods that are associated with the Jewish, Chinese, and Puerto Rican communities in the neighborhood. Egg creams are not something you would find anywhere in Eastern Europe, and egg rolls are not something you really find in China. These are American traditions that have come from an immigrant past. The festival is known for its interactive booths that allow adults and children to fully immerse themselves into the cultural activities. The, the booths that you see are all pretty much interactive, so you can sit down and engage with a Chinese tea ceremony. As soon as the tea table, you're entering the world of Chinese tea culture. Chinese tea culture. Today's trivia question wait, 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 is, wait, 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 what's wait. the connection between... Hold on, hold on. Okay. So our next question is, during the Charleston, if you are collecting tiles for a 2021 hand, what number tiles did Linda Fisher suggest would be a good tile to keep? So this is a good strategy question for the Mahjong League, National Mahjong League card. So 
the question again, Michelle, it is during the Charleston, if you are going for a 2021 hand, what other tiles would be a good strategy to keep if you get them passed to you during the Charleston? Another number tile, another suit, a dragon, a flower, what other tiles would be good to keep? So the answer is you should keep threes for switching to a consecutive run. This is thanks to Linda Fisher for this strategy tip. Okay, next question. For 2021, what is the value of the highest hand on the card? What is the second highest value? Okay, so before I, I answer, I see Jeanette and a few other people are saying that they are turning their sound up and now they can't hear. Can everyone hear me talking now? Okay, I have Sheila. She okay, so the answer for the highest value is 75 and the second highest is 50. So um, Don, I think Jeanette was saying for you to talk a little louder when you talk. Okay, and also when I'm playing the timer, you were talking, that's why they put it. Uh, okay. okay. So our next question is, for our last April tournament, it was the first tournament on the new card, we kicked off the new card and we noticed something very unusual about the scoring. What did we notice about penalties for throwing to three exposures during this tournament? is for out of both our four and eight round tournaments we only had one 25 penalty only one player one threw player. to three closures players noticing quicker games mahjong before the fourth wall and more self-pick wins we're coming if you want to share about our upcoming so our, our May and June tournaments, are uh, the registration is online. Our May tournament, we are donating, every month we donate it to charity, a percentage to charity. And May, we are donating to the American Heart Association. And June, our tournament is our second virtual longest day tournament. So we are donating to the Alzheimer's Association. For people that are back playing in person, we're safe. We send custom score sheets. So your foursome can play and submit the score sheets to us, or you can continue playing with your friends that you've met virtually online all over the US and beyond. So I think Roxanne was asking what's the first, what was the first part of, so which, I'm sorry, were you asking about the four and eight round tournaments, Barbara? So what we were saying is usually we have, we created rules for virtual tournaments because we knew some players played on Mahjong Time, Real Mahjong. Now there's other options, Mahjong, National Mahjong League. So we created a score sheet that made it a level playing field across all of the platforms. So in order to keep it competitive, we have minus 10 for throwing to two or more exposures. We have minus 25 for throwing to three or more. And the reason we do that is because we don't want people to, you know, kind of just give up at the end and we want people to play competitively the whole time and make it feel more like a tournament. And usually there, as we enter the scores, we notice a lot of minus 10s, a lot of minus 25s out of, out of, I'm just guessing, but out of my memory, I think last month we had like 180 players total in the two different rounds. And we only had one minus 25 for the entire tournament. So I think most people are noticing in person and online play that the games are quicker, there are a lot of self-picked and a lot of games are ending before the fourth wall. So I hope that catches up, Barbara. Sure. And um, so wait, now I, I'm out of turn. Was no, it I have it 19. Okay. So the next question is, do you get a bonus for Mahjong 
for all hands on the card if they are self-picked. So do you get a bonus for all hands that are self-picked? So the answer to that is yes, every hand that's self-picked, you get a bonus for. The next question is similar, but it's, do you get a bonus for Mahjong for every hand on the card if they are jokerless? And this is going to be a two-part question. So I'm going to keep reading before we get to the answer. So the first part is, do you get a bonus for every hand on the card if it is jokerless? The second part is, if there is a reason you don't, what section is that in and why? So if there is a section that you don't get a bonus for a jokerless hand, why is that? So the answer is no, you do not get a bonus for singles and pairs hands. Um, and you ask why? You say the difficulty is taken into account. The difficulty of the hand is taken so into the account. The scoring is already incorporated. There's already a bonus kind of built into the score, and that's why they're a higher value. Okay. So the next question is, assuming... Your hand is self-picked and jokerless, other than the big hand, which self-picked would be a dollar fifty. What is the highest value for a hand possible for self-picked and jokerless? So other than the big hand, other than the 2021. What is the highest value for a hand? Self-picked and jokerless. <laughs> So wait, Sandra may have correct, be correcting me because I was thinking that the highest would be 120 because you would think at first it would be a quint, but quints can't be jokerless and self-picked because they can't be, by nature, can't be jokerless. So the highest other hand that I saw was a 30 point, which doubled would be 60 and double that would be 120. So if somebody sees something other than that, please let us know. <laughs> we were having fun making these up, so... Well, these questions are good because they make you actually read the card, you yes. know. And that's another thing. A lot of time when people ask questions, um, well, the other singles and pairs, you get the bonus for jokerless, but we were uh, for self-picked, but not for joker, not for jokerless. So the next question, I am going to share my screen, and Tony was nice enough to record both the um, question for us and the answer. Today's trivia question is, what's the connection between aviation and mahjong? Answer later. What's the connection? In the 19th century, uh, two brothers, uh, Otto and Gustav Lilienthal, we're experimenting with flight. And here's a picture of, uh, you may have seen this uh, before. Uh, this is Otto preparing to fly. Um, they were uh, famous pioneers in, uh, in flight, but they were also inventors. And they invented a system of um, construction bricks uh, for educational purposes. And, um, yeah, they uh, uh, tried to market this, but it never took off because they weren't very good business businessmen. Enter uh, Friedrich Adolf Richter, who was a toy manufacturer in uh, in Germany, 
and uh, he saw the potential of uh, their idea, so he bought the patent, um, and he uh, started making uh, the building blocks and produced thousands and thousands of sets. And uh, I just happen to have one here, uh, as you can see, they're uh, made in different colours and uh, different uh, shapes and sizes. Uh, red for sandstone, white for limestone and blue for granite. And uh, yeah, he made a, a lot of money uh, out of these. Now, what's this got to do with uh, Mahjong? Well, at the end of uh, the uh, First World War, um, German troops uh, imprisoned in China uh, learned to play Mahjong. And they came back to Germany and, uh, you know, enthusing about this game with a, a few sets. But the problem was that um, Germany was forbidden to trade with China, so they couldn't export any sets from uh, uh, from China to um, to Germany. So Richter had the bright idea of using his uh, patent uh, material to produce mahjong sets. And you may be familiar with uh, some of the sets that uh, he's made. He made them in black and uh, in the, these iconic uh, races, uh, you see them uh, across the bottom here. Um, this is a particularly good example. Many of them are uh, in a very bad way because the material is unforgiving and uh, the acetate face on, the, on these tiles uh, gets destroyed very easily. Here's a domestic set. Uh, that's in a very bad way. Uh, this is one of his earlier productions, which was uh, uh, doesn't have the uh, the races for the uh, seasons. Anyway, so uh, that's uh, that's it. That's how uh, the connection between aviation and uh, mahjong occurred. That's great. Right. We learned so much. Yes. So Tony, Tony normally tries to, even though he's in um, England, tries to stay up, but he said that he will join us on our virtual vintage next week instead. Okay. So the next question, I don't know how many people on here uh, play Hong Kong Mahjong, but we have an interesting question. So for Hong Kong Mahjong, what is a dead wall and how is it used? So I hope I'm explaining this correctly. Thank you, Michelle, for the help on these. The last seven stacks of the wall are these tiles are only played when someone needs a replacement tile for a flower or a Kong. The dead wall is also known as the Kong box or a flower box. So now for those of you that play Wright-Patterson, we have a question. What is, I hope I pronounced this correctly, what is a hop toy and what is required to pull one off? Oh, thank you. Michelle also told us that it's also known as a ghost wall. Thank you. So the question again is for White Wright Patterson, what is a hop toy and what is required to pull one off? <laughs> So I've never played Wright Patterson myself, but I find this very interesting. So hop toy is a bit of magic in the game. When there are corner tiles from two walls during the deal, those tiles contain the magic, giving you powerful tiles like jokers or flowers. The trick is you have to believe. <laughs> OK, 
Okay. So the next question is also about Wright-Patterson. What is a bouquet? So in Wright-Patterson, a bouquet is the flowers of one through four of the same grouping, such as vases, seasons, colors, or a scene. That is called a bouquet. And this is the final question for Wright-Patterson. And then we'll continue on for others. What does it mean to be impure? And what do you do if it happens to you? <laughs> We're talking about Mahjong, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So a player's hand is impure when the hand contains an incorrect number of tiles. Very interesting. Sounds similar to a dead hand in Mahjong. Right. Okay. The next question is about Ricci Mahjong. I hope I pronounce this right. <laughs> what does four a ten mean and how can you overcome it? <laughs> So that is when a player has discarded a tile that would have otherwise completed their hand. It is Furiton. This player cannot win on an opponent's discard, but can only win by self-picking for Mahjong. Oh, interesting. Okay, so the next question is some history. Many of us have heard and know that Joseph Babcock brought Mahjong back to the United States from China. Do you know which US city and state Babcock first introduced Mahjong to in the United States? So in the summer of 1920, Joseph Babcock brought Mahjan to Catalina Island, which is off Southern California. Then when they saw the interest and in how popular they thought it was gonna be, the Babcock opened the Mahjan Sales Company of America and opened it near the port of San Francisco. Okay. The next question is for National Mahjan League, rules, I guess. Can a player call Mahjong before the Charleston? That'd be great. If so, which player and what is it called? How is the player paid and why? <laughs> going <laughs> <laughs> so the only player that could call mahjong is east and if they are dealt 14 tiles that makes mahjong that would be considered a heavenly hand they are actually paid double since it is considered self-picked and um just because we don't want to go too far over and we still have time for um michelle and debbie to talk about mahjong and then we have more questions after that so i'm going to go to the next question which was very similar it's, um, can you have Mahjong at the end of the Charleston? So again, that is only East. And that instead of a heavenly hand, that is an earthly hand that is also paid double and that is self-picked. 
So I've only had that, that happen once to me playing online in the beginning of COVID. But it's very exciting. <laughs> okay, so the next question is, why is Mahjong sometimes referred to as the game of sparrows? I'm sure many people have heard this, but um, the original classical Chinese character for the game was translated as a hemp sparrow, a jute bird, or flax bird. Cantonese people refer to the game as ma jack, which means sparrow, or the game of sparrows. So in China, the sparrow was considered to be an intelligent bird. Mahjong is often called the game of 100 intelligences and considered a game for clever people because it can be so challenging. Some hear the sound of sparrow chirps in the distinct sound of the tiles the tiles make when they are shuffled, and some see a sparrow pecking for food in a way in the way the players pick up the tiles, which I thought was very funny. <laughs> okay, so the next question is. What is the name of the upcoming Mahjong theme convention and where is it being held? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> the softball question. So um, without further ado, we will tell you that the name of the convention is Majkan, and I will spell it. And I believe, um, sorry about that. I believe this is the website, but you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. It is Majkan and it is being held right outside of Orlando, Florida in Lake Mary. And we would like to introduce Michelle Frizzell and Debbie Barnett. Uh, Donna's gonna let them unmute themselves so they can give you a little taste of what Mashkan is gonna be. Excellent, thank you so much. And thank you for inviting us to be here. This is really fun. I'll be yeah. a trivia game because I have that little competitive nature in me. So I'm sitting there <laughs> thinking, how many do I have right? <laughs> It was a lot more challenging than I thought it was going to be. And there's a lot more than playing this game. Yeah. <laughs> this is our second one. So we had to really reach deep. You know, the first one, we already had a lot of kind of basic, more basic questions. So this one was a lot deeper. Okay. Yeah. We didn't miss too much. We will be there at the next ones for sure. <laughs> if you need help with any questions, I'd be happy to help. I'm sure Debbie would too. Yeah. And it's a great way to learn. Yes. Yeah. Fabulous. All right, so you know what? One of the funny things is, well, I don't know if it's funny, but I guess common at the moment anyway, is where did the name Majkan come from? And I don't, does anyone in the room know about Comic-Con or Dragon-Con? Katie Albert agrees with you, yep. <laughs> so any con, it's a conference. And so, the reason or where this sparked from is that I went to, to Dragon Con in Atlanta a couple years ago and I thought, you know what, the, the demographic of this group would love Japanese Mahjong, Richie Mahjong, because there's animes. And so I thought I'm going to go to Anime Weekend Atlanta and I'm going to be an exhibitor and have a table for Richie Mahjong. And people would come by and I would give them a super quick lesson and then my card to my meetup. And I thought, as I was at that event, I thought, you know what, this would be fantastic for Mahjong players. And so it kind of sat in my head for a couple years. And then when Debbie and I started working together, I mentioned it to her and that's what led us to create Mahjong. And we have our first event in October of this year. Mahjong. Really be there or be square. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You can say one day you were at the inaugural event. <laughs> I wanted to quickly just show our, our website. If you go to Majcon, M A H J C O N dot com, you'll see the Majcon website. That's a picture of the venue where we'll be. And all the information is on this site. You can see where it's going to be, uh, or the date, October 2021. And of course, we have a countdown to get everybody excited about it. And then we show a little bit about the venue. And then the ticket pricing, of course, is on the homepage. And 
we have a couple of options. We have what we're calling a Jubilee. That's gonna be an optional activity the night before for anybody traveling in advance. They can go to the Jubilee, which I'll share about in a minute. And we also are gonna have virtual admission, not just because of COVID, the cooties. We're gonna have it because not everybody can travel. And we would love for everybody to be able to experience MoshCon if you're in home for whatever reason. And then we also wanna give a shout out to Maj on Time. They're a sponsor of MoshCon this year. So big shout out to Slava and his team at Maj on Time. So the other thing I just wanted to briefly share is that we have a menu at the top of the screen that will give you all kinds of information about the event, including the schedule, speakers, exhibitors that we have. Um, we have a, a few exhibitors, including Mahjong or Mahjong Dice, Modern Mahjong. They will be an exhibitor at MajCon this year. We're very happy about that. We also, uh, I'll, I'll save the rest for Debbie. I'm sure she'd be really excited to share about our exhibitors. Um, so we also have some news. So please feel free to poke around our website and um, go to our schedule page where you can get to know with the speakers and, and our schedule in depth. And Debbie is gonna share a little bit more. Okay. All right, Michelle is gonna bring open the schedule, which is downloadable. If you can also view it on the website, but if you wanna download it, you also can. So this is a two day event and it is limited to 100 people this year. We purposely did that because Michelle and I wanna learn the ropes of doing conferences, get the kinks out and learn from our mistakes. So it is a 100 people event. Uh, the first uh, night is October 10th and that's gonna be our Jubilee, which is just gonna be a hoot. It is gonna be a themed event and a silent auction with social gaming with the proceeds going to Alzheimer's. So this is going to be a lot of fun. And the dress up, the theme this year is the Roaring Twenties. So for the guys, you got to get your Gatsby's on. And for the girls, well, I can actually just show you. I'm not wearing it tonight, but um, <laughs> this is one of our pieces here. Michelle and I, well, actually, Michelle's got her entire get up. I still have to get on it, but um, we're going to also, for those who don't want to travel with a costume or don't want to purchase one, we're going to have a lot of fun stuff on a table so you could still get in the spirit. So that's going to be on the evening of Sunday, and that's 6 to 9. And then on the main day, we have, which is the Monday, October 11th, we are going to start out with our keynote speaker, Bonnie Galasio, and we are so excited to have Barney with us this year. And then as you can see here, there are uh, tracks that appeal to both um, instructors and players. So we want this to be an educational event, and each year we do want it to be educational as well as a lot of fun. And we want to make each one of our sessions very interactive. We won't have any boring uh, talks or lectures or anything like that. We have committed to that 100%. And since this is on small scale this year, Michelle and I are going to be the speakers. Next year will look very, very different. But for this year, we are going to be the speakers. So you could take a look at some of the things that are listed here that we'll be speaking about. And then when we break for lunch, we have another special guest speaker, Gladys Grad is gonna be joining us. And that's really exciting. And then once we break for the day, we're gonna go into an afternoon of social gaming. And then in the evening, we're gonna have another session of social gaming. So there's gonna be a lot of learning, a lot of playing and a lot of having fun. And as Michelle mentioned a little bit earlier, we have exhibitors. We don't have all the exhibitors filled up yet. So if anybody knows anybody that is um, a potential exhibitor, please send them our way. There is a link on the website for exhibitors and you click on get involved and you can, um, I mean, I'm sorry, not get involved. That's the other one, but the exhibitors apply now. 
Uh, but we have so far, as you can see there on the page, if you click on that exhibitors real quickly one more time, Michelle, and you'll see we have Modern Mahjong and we have Jill Fox with uh, the Mahjong Wipes that, with us this year. And today we also signed up another exhibitor, exciting, and it is a rep from Alzheimer's. And I think you, Modern Mahjong, you guys down down and you know Janelle. Uh, Janelle is going to be there uh, rooting for Alzheimer's and she is going to be one of our exhibitors. So that's really, really exciting. We have some other in the workings too, but until they're finalized, we don't wanna go ahead and announce them quite yet. Now, um, and Michelle, please chime in if I'm missing anything. I feel like I'm just talking a mile a minute here. Uh, so the tickets are currently still on sale. Uh, the Jubilee actually was two tickets away from being filled up. That's the Sunday night uh, event. And so I gave a call to the hotel and I asked them if there was a possibility of adding a few tables. And the gal said, sure, we could fit three more very comfortably. So we opened up 12 more seats. So yay, so we have 14 tickets left for the Jubilee. So that's, it's important because those are limited, uh, limited seating. So it's important to go ahead and sign up for those as soon as possible. For the main event, we have 34 tickets left. So they're going pretty quickly too. And then for social gaming on Monday afternoon, we have 12 tickets left. In the evening, we have 11 tickets left uh, and one thing I wanted to mention to everybody is that we are offering a special offer to all of the participants of tonight's trivia event. We're giving 25% off tickets and you can use DICE25 as your coupon code to get that discount. We're also going to be doing a drawing and the drawing is going to be for three virtual tickets. And to participate in this drawing, all you need to do is subscribe to our YouTube channels. And those links will be in the, um, in the event notes. I couldn't think there for a second I, what I was saying. The drawing is going to take place on Monday, May 10th. So you have until then to go ahead and subscribe to those links. Uh, did I miss anything, Michelle? Uh, let's see. Get it all in. <laughs> Just a couple things. Uh, one is that we have virtual tickets available still. Forty, I think forty-seven. So we do have some availability with our virtual tickets. Yeah. And then also, Fern Bernstein is going to be a special guest, and we are very excited to hear her story. And that'll be a special uh, guest at our luncheon. So. You can look forward to having Fern Bernstein there too. And she's going to have a table as well. She'll be uh, doing book signings at MajCon, which is very exciting. Yeah. And uh, the only other thing is that if you want to volunteer, we do have some volunteer spots available, I believe. So please look for the Get Involved and click the link for volunteers. We would uh, really appreciate the support and the help at yeah. Our first MoshCon event. Yeah. Michelle, sure. you guys have a question. Jeanette a wanted question, to know, yeah. are all the games going to be National Mahjong League or will there be other styles of play? All okay. National Mahjong League, yes. Yes, this year. It may look different in future years, but for this year, yes. Yeah. Thank you both very much for Thank joining you. us. It's exciting. We appreciate that. If anybody has any questions, you guys can go to their website and follow up with Michelle and Debbie. Yeah. So um, we know we usually end at eight. So we're just going to try to wrap up with a few um, quick more um, trivia right. questions. So the next one I am going to ask is, we asked Linda Fisher, is it unfriendly to call a player's hand dead? And why should you call a player's hand dead if you believe they are? So. It's 
definitely not unfriendly to call a player's hand dead. Remember, you're not calling the player dead. You're calling the hand dead. If you can tell from tiles that are out on the table or on players' racks that a player's hand is unwinnable, impossible to make mahjong, then you may declare that hand to be dead. When that happens, the player stops playing. So not only do you get more picks, because only three people are picking tiles instead of four, but this could be a teachable moment for everyone at the table in terms of what would make a hand go dead. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Linda, for that. Okay, so the next question is, in National Mahjong League games we're talking about, who must remain silent? Both a player called dead and a better, if you're playing with a better. So the rules are that if you have a better, they cannot impact the game at all. And once you are called dead, you cannot talk at all. So it's very, um, Mahjong made easy, spells out a lot of rules that when we were going through, even though they're just kind of second nature, you sometimes just don't remember the details. So it was interesting reading those. The next question is, what word was used for players that attended the initial meeting of the National Mahjong League? They were called a specific word. And the answer is the players attending the initial meeting of the National Mahjong League were called delegates. Delegates? Delegates, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what they were called. <laughs> Do you think something different, Michelle? Um, just to interrupt, sorry, Sally, yes, there is actually a rule and it's a, it's on the National Mahjong League's card and I think it might be on the back of the card. If you call someone dead and they say, no, I'm not, and they continue playing, either whichever person was wrong at the end of the game pays the other person 50 cents. So there is a penalty either way. So the next question we have is, what was the name of the touring exhibition that explored the fascinating history of Mahjan and its impact on cultural identity, fashion, and style. So it was a touring exhibition and it started, I believe, in New York and went all around the US. So the answer is it was called Project Mahjan and it was curated and circulated by the Museum of Jewish Heritage, a living memorial to the Holocaust in New York. The exhibition provided insight into the history and imagery of the game, imagery of the game, and explored connections between Chinese and Jewish cultures and included dozens of artifacts, scorecards, aprons, packages, tiles, which chronicled both the commercial legacy and social history of the game. Okay, so our last question. So oh, before our last question, so when we sent the registration reminders, we had some emails with some questions so we thought one very interesting question was, how many videos does Michelle Frizzell have up on her channel? And we thought it was a very funny answer. So everybody will give you a second to think of in your mind. Michelle, how long have you been doing this for since? Oh, I think she's muted, sorry. Um, Michelle, how long have you been uh, doing videos for? Oh, since 2017. So since 2017, drum roll, you have? 1,999 <laughs> videos. And you, you weren't dreaming when you wrote that, so. <laughs> no, I was just a surprise myself when I told you the number. Wow. That's funny. And then the um, final question is, what airline created a uh, second, they already had one, this is their second, limited edition signature set, and what was the design that they used for the White Dragons? And we'll show you a photo. So the answer is Singapore Airlines. And the White Dragon was an airplane window, as you can see right there. Ooh. Very cool. <laughs> it's great. The BAMs are the seat maps. The, it's just very, very creative. Mm -hmm. 
So we will, I'm trying to think, I think there was, I'm trying to see if the person who sent the other question was on. We got another question, which I don't know if you guys just want to think of this and maybe email us or we got a question from a player that said one of her friends constantly does singles and pairs and is constantly throwing jokers several, several in a row. And she said, she knows there's not a rule about it, but what can be done? And other than rolling your eyes and wishing it was you, I, I don't, so basically we thought maybe the advice to her would be if she speaks to her friend and just says, you know, you're kind of giving information about your hand when you're doing that one in a, you know, joker, joker, joker in a row. And maybe it's better to save some towards the end since they're safe tiles to throw, but there's nothing uh, you can nothing do. Yeah. <laughs> so. so Pam said, I love one. I think assuming the Singapore Airlines set, but just so you know, you have to live in Singapore in order to purchase. In order to purchase them, you needed a Singapore address to get them. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and they sold out again. So, mm -hmm. so with the final question, which we're just going to kind of have everybody will just give the answer. Um, it was what categories do we have on our YouTube channel? So we share one of them is all of our Zoom talks. We replay them all. Another is our fun Mahjong Fine Friday. Another one is strategy. And then our final one is both why I Maj and men that Maj. And what we do with those is we share why you play. And everybody has a different story of what drew them to the game. And it's just so interesting to see the connection. A lot of the stories are extremely different, but have common, very common um, themes of connecting, friendship, socialization. So that is something that we really think is um, interesting. And then there's the rest of the and here was the answer to that. So this shows our different playlists. So it's our Why I Maj, Men That Maj, Strategy, Fun Maj on Fine Friday, and our Zoom Talks. So if you want to share your Maj on story, please send us an email, modernmajon at gmail.com, and we would love to share your Maj on story. So Jeanette, thank you so much. Sorry. Thank you guys all so much for, uh, Michelle, what were you saying about the collector one? I get Donna, should we unmute? Isn't there a playlist everybody. for collector, your collector series? Oh, yes, yes, yes. That we put under our Zoom events, yes. Oh, we could, okay. We could have a separate one, just virtual vintage. You should, because a lot of people really enjoy that uh, mm -hmm. uh, series. I do. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's just amazing. The tiles that we have seen. I mean, I thought I saw a lot of unique tiles, but Donna mm -hmm. and I are just so impressed with all of them. Uh, Pam wants to know what is the Friday? I think she means fun, the fun thing. Oh, fun so fun Mahjong fine Friday, what we do is both Donna and I just love seeing Mahjong like in nature. <laughs> so if it's in a TV show, a movie, um, a magazine, um, we've shared the Marvelous Miss Maisel, Seinfeld, um, Sarah Jessica oh, Parker, Julia Roberts. Family. Yeah, I think my favorite one is Modern Family. Yeah, me too. So those are a lot of fun. If anybody ever sees Mahjong in a series, we love it. Uh, Maria, one of our um, one of our Mahjong community members, she posted about a Japanese diner that had great shows. You, you uh, Donna, I think it was Tofu, the episode. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So, so it's, Hong, it's called Hong Kong Diners, and yeah, we shared that. So that's a lot of fun. If you ever see something, um, the most recent one we did, we um, we it's an older movie, but we did a one on um, Crazy Rich Asians and a sneak peek, even though it's only Wednesday, um, our Friday one is going to be Billy Crystal. So it's a very cute one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Donna, you want to tell everyone about what's coming I up? I say, don't forget, we're still having giveaway of five book plates signed by Annalise Hines. So the deadline is tomorrow. You have to watch the recording of our Zoom talk with her and comment, and you'll be entered into a drawing for a signed book plate by her. So don't forget that's the deadline is tomorrow. And um, our, our savings for thanking you for coming for 10% off on our website also ends tomorrow. And then we told you about our upcoming tournaments. Our next, we actually have next Wednesday is what Michelle just mentioned, our next virtual vintage. 
So if you enjoy seeing incredible sets, please come join us. And that's it. <laughs> so you can stop sharing your screen maybe and I can. Oh yeah. So everybody could wave and say hello. And don't forget to find out more information about entering to win um, tickets for MajCon. Don and I aren't affiliated with MajCon. We invited them to come on to yeah. tell you guys about it. And we are going to be exhibitors there. So we're very excited to finally meet. Donna, unfortunately, can't make it. She has a wedding. So I will I will have a big cutout of Donna next to me. <laughs> so. Thank you so much for uh, having us here to share yeah. about Mars Pond. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. Exciting. Happy anniversary, Donna. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I made it another year. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it. My husband's been working from home since last March. So, exactly. so it's a very I'm big anniversary. <laughs> Well, this was really fun. I had a great Thank time. Thank you. Thanks Happy for coming, everyone. Hi, Amy. Good Christine. Job. Good job. Hi, Christine. Thank you. Hey, John. Hi, Christine. Good Thank you. you all. Is it tonight? Donna? 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 Is it tonight? Yeah. Donna? My Is anniversary was yesterday. was May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. So I thought okay. we should have had a Star Wars theme wedding, but we didn't. So. Or is it uh, <laughs> Saturday, May the 8th? Oh. Cool. Soon? Yeah. Can Girls, great girls. Love you, girls. Great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that's great. That's, we really appreciate you guys joining us. It makes it fun. It looks something to look forward to. And we've learned a lot. <laughs> we didn't know any of this stuff, Zoom and iMovie and all that beforehand. So it's okay. been a fun learning curve. Thank you. Um, yeah. Why am I talking to you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you so where is the uh, virtual thing that you should we apply for the virtual ticket? Is that for, is that on your site or on Michelle's site? So just by I believe Michelle, if you can explain, I think it's just by liking our YouTube channel oh. and liking her YouTube channel. Subscribe, mm -hmm. subscribe to both our YouTube channels, uh -huh. and there are links in chat to the channels. Mm -hmm. and, um, and we'll, when we share this replay, we'll include those links as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, no problem. Okay. Thank you, Pam. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Bye, night, Bye. 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 Donna Ashen. We don't see your face, but oh, good night, Jeanette. Yeah. Oh, you're there. There she is. <laughs> now I see Christine. I'd love to play with you, Dara, one day with you and Donna. <laughs> Sounds great. Are you in? You're in Boca, right? Boca, though. Yeah. Thanks for helping my friend out. There's oh, you're welcome. Okay. It was so Thank funny. You. It was like a, a whole covert operation just to get her her card. <laughs> oh, if anyone's local in South Florida, we do have a few extra cards that we ordered. Yeah, we're going to do a post about it. So, yeah. we'll see. Okay, good girls. Happy anniversary. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Bye. 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 See you again. Bye. Bye. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. You too. Bye. 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 Great. Bye.